Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas with YOLO Live, and today I have exciting information about the YOLO Box Mini, specifically the YOLO Box Mini 1.5 update. All right, let's get into this. If you are unfamiliar with the YOLO Box family, this is the YOLO Box Pro. It's got a nice big eight inch screen. This is the YOLO Box Mini. It has a little five inch screen, but now their feature parity has been brought even closer together. They work a little bit differently and we'll get into that in a minute, but they're about the same thickness. They both obviously run on a battery. Um, the Pro has three HDMI inputs. The Mini has just one. But other than that, they are very, very similar in capability. And you can really see with the size difference here. If you want something for just a camera top monitor, the Mini is the way to go. If you need the most portable production capability, the Pro is the way to go. So let's get into these features. 1.5 update, as I said, most of the YOLO Box Pro features now come to the Mini. And this is because these two newer YOLO Boxes feature the same processor. So we're able to put most of the same features into these new units. YOLO Live's network bonding makes your stream unbreakable. YOLO Box bonding is separate from ASP, which I will get into both of those today. Uh, rolled out as a premium feature, and available separately for up to four connections, including Wi-Fi, Ethernet, 4G LTE, and a USB dongle. This doesn't look like it'll have four different inputs, but it can, because remember, you have a SIM card on the bottom. That's your cellular. You have Wi-Fi, so you can connect to something local via Wi-Fi. It has a full Ethernet port right here. There's your Ethernet, but where does the other one come from? If you use a USB stick, with an additional cellular connection. You just pull that off and plug it into the cellular connection. There's your fourth input. Next up, a dedicated page for YOLOcast events. This mirrors the way the YOLOcast events have been broken out onto the YOLO Box Pro and just makes the feature parity more even across the two units. Of special importance is now, when you create a YOLOcast event, you'll be able to see something created on the Pro on the Mini and an event created on the Mini you'll be able to see on the Pro. So that way they are again, very even. Next up is the instant replay capability that was just added to the Pro. This enables you to save all your instant replays to your media, whether it be SD card or USB stick. This way, if you do a soccer game and you do 20 different replays through the event, at the end of the event, you'll be able to have all of those replays and do a recap of just those re you know, great events that you saved and felt good enough to do a replay during your actual event. Next up is the option to add images as video sources. So this image that is behind me, this can be set to automatically change up to 10 images automatically. Plus this enables you to loop them and manually select which ones you want as well. We'll get into that. A couple more smaller features, audio follows video default setting is turned off. A lot of people ask for this. Now it is embedded into the mini as well as the pro. We'll show you how to best make use of this. Automatic page turning for PDF source. This now works like the static images as a video source. It, you can set it to automatically go through the pages at a certain interval so that you can use this as a slideshow. Wi-Fi support for displaying 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And this is a big one. Lower third supports movement in all directions. I'm going to love to show you this. The first big feature is network bonding on the Mini. It has been taken out of beta. Now it is a pay to use service like ASP, but bonding is separate from ASP. Those are two different things and they're accessed in two different places. Let's look. Here you can see I've got my Mini in front of me. It's, a, it's super small. I've got two inputs on top. I've got my video output. I've got Ethernet. I've got a audio input and I've got my power. I pretty much got almost every single port filled in here. I don't have headphones and I don't have a line input, but I'm pretty set for this little box. I've got a, an event here, but right at the top, you can see I've got standard events and YOLOcast events and you can tag there's two different pages. Pages set up to go through YOLOcast with all of the features that YOLOcast has to offer and standard events. And once again, you can do simple multicasting 
without having to use YOLOcast. YOLOcast offers so much more, it's a whole separate video. But if you just want to output to one, two, or three different destinations, you don't need YOLOcast. You can do that through your standard events. I have one set up here. Now, over here in the corner, in your network settings, this is where your network bonding is. Right now, it's closed. I can come over here and I can turn it on and it's going to find my different sources and make those available to me. Here you go down the bottom, you can see Wi-Fi, 4G, Ethernet, USB dongle, and I can even run a speed test from this. But this is not the only place you access this. This is just one of the two places that you do. Separate from that is if you are creating a YOLO cast event, I'm gonna create a new event. One of the top features here is streaming with ASP, which is basically a buffer on your YOLO box and in the cloud on YOLO live servers so that if your internet, no matter how you're connecting, if your internet completely bottoms out, you've got a little bit of a buffer to play out from the other side, it's still playing, it's still playing. And then when your connectivity comes back, you begin feeding that buffer. That itself makes your streams almost unbreakable. When you go into a standard event like this, you will see a new icon down here at the bottom. This is your bonding. We're gonna click on that. And here you see much the same interface as we saw on the outer page. You can also access it in the actual event itself. So we can run a speed test. I have, again, both ethernet and Wi-Fi connected. So we'll do run a speed test. And it's going to run this test essentially twice. It's gonna run it both for the built-in ethernet and then it's also going to run it through the wi-fi and give me the combined score for both of those and there you go now it is done above is the maximum bandwidth it's 34 down but if you click on that little thing it'll say i've got 18 up and then now you will see that down here that combined my bonding speed test is 22.3 and you can buy different packages and here you can see the package I have says I have 50 gigabytes remaining. I can turn bonding on and off and you can see behind there, if I tap over here, you can see there's a little icon that tells me that it's combining my different inputs together, that I have both ethernet and Wi-Fi. And again, the Wi-Fi settings, one of the key things that it, they added here is they also enable you to see on each of your Wi-Fi availability, whether it is coming via 2.4 or five gigahertz. So you can see this one's available only on 2.4, this one's available on five, this one's available on both. And the advantage is understanding the difference between 2.4 and five gigahertz. 2.4 is a larger wave and it travels further more reliably. So if you need to reach something you know, in the distance, select 2.4 and it'll be more reliable. If you need greater speed and you have it available like it's in your office, you can select the five gigahertz band and that will give you greater access to greater speed. As I mentioned before, YOLOcast events gets its own page. As you can see right here, I can select all my YOLOcast events and I can select my standard events. The YOLOcast events, if you haven't looked into it, YOLOcast offers a host of specific services, especially for those who want full control over how it's viewed. You have the ability to embed it into your page and you're not gonna get ads from other places. You have full control over your stream through YOLOcast. Those are available here and as I mentioned, at the beginning, both your YOLOcast events created on the Pro and the Mini will be available on this page. If you want to quick find out more, you can click on the little YOLOcast button at the bottom here, and then it'll give, take, basically take you to the YOLOcast page on YOLO Live. And you can turn on about the Ardent Streaming Protocol, the built-in video player controls, you can put, stream for 24-7, you can also have simulated live where you play back a video file as if it's live, meaning you don't actually have to sit here and do this. You basically have your show record it and then you can do a simulated live, automated scheduling of events. You have an intuitive media center because past events can be viewed as well. It's a repository for all of your stuff. Go to the website and find out more. Next up is saved instant replays. And this is something a lot of users have asked for and Yola Live listened and made it happen. What we're gonna do is let's take a look at the mini here and 
first we're going to come over here and on the right hand side down at the bottom you have your replay settings you're going to want to dive in here and if you've never used instant replay there's a whole bunch of settings just for your instant replay on the device first how long of a duration do you want 10 seconds doesn't sound like much but when you slow it down it's no longer 10 seconds if you go at half speed it's 20 seconds and that's a long time i usually find seven seconds works pretty well seven will get you 14 at half speed but 0.75 tends to be a very good speed it slows it down a little bit people can perceive that it's not regular speed but it's not super slow so this gets you to about seven about 10 seconds 12 seconds or so and here's the audio for your replay you can decide do you i want the replay audio which will of course be slow down and sound a little bit like that i tend to not want replay audio and next mute the other sources during replay I like to have my normal audio continue, but if you wanted to have the replay audio but not have your normal audio, you can push those two and basically reverse that. And then, of course, show the replay overlay. It's a little word replay on the program or not. You get to choose. So these are your replay settings right here. We're going to come out. Now, replay happens when you are recording or when you are streaming. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a recording. And then I am going to, not that one, we are going to go to a video clip I have of soccer. So we're going to pretend this is a soccer game. I'm in the studio and not on the sideline. And it's challenging to get a whole bunch of people. Here he goes, here he goes. He kicks it and he misses. So we can hit replay. So now you can see. This is the replay, it's a little bit slower. The word replay is over here. He kicks it and it goes over there and then it's gonna jump back to the camera input or whatever's already, you know, already in progress. So you saw that replay there. Now, if you keep doing this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna build up a repository of videos, little vignettes that you can use. Let's go back to our inputs. Go back to me so this stops playing um, now if i go and to load a local video it's going to show me what i've got here and it shows me replay 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 it shows me all of these different replays that are stored on my media one caveat to all these replays is they're stored at standard speed they're stored at the speed as they were recorded onto the media the slow motion happens during the replay of the clip it doesn't happen during the recording of the clip. So the clips that you have stored on your media are all stored at standard speed. And here they are available. So if you had the time, you could literally load them. You know, I could select that replay as a clip done, and then I have it available and I can bring it up and play that replay during the show, like halftime or something like that. And we can talk about it. So those are immediately available. And I said, as I said, also available after the event itself. Next up, adding images as sources. Now, previously, if you wanted to add images, you could only add them as overlays or like this. If you had a camera, you could add them as a green screen background, but now they can be their own source. You just come down here, you add a source, and you can see you got PDF and images. Now, again, this new feature affects both of these. If I select my images, I can select Oh, I have got a bunch of animated GIF images here. I'm going to add um, gray background. I'm going to add this cool ship indoors, whatever, done. And what's going to happen is I've got two little icons there. The right icon you're familiar with from your camera icon. And what that means is if I click that, I can do chroma keying, green or blue, and I can crop something that people have asked for. Now you can load um, images that have like a green background or a blue background and just use them as lower thirds in order. That's pretty cool. We're not going to do that here. Let's click on the right icon here, or the, I'm sorry, the left icon. And here's your auto switch. You, when you say auto switch, it's going to go through these images one at a time for however long you set. And just like with the instant replay, if I click on that number, I can set it to 59 minutes, so an hour, 
between images could be kind of useful if you have a multi-hour show, but not everyone's doing multi-hour shows. So zero minute, 10 seconds, whatever, done. We'll do that and we'll put those on and we'll say, you can manually select any one of these. You can go out of order. You can scroll, come over here, come over there, done. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring that up as a source and you can see, tap this out of the way, this is actually moving. So these animated GIFs are moving on their own and they're changing. So I'm not using my hands to, sh to change these and every 10 seconds, it will go to the next image automatically. I don't have to do it. And this is fantastic because you can use these as a display. You can use these as a background because as an image you can do, let me come over here. Ba, 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 ba. I can add a picture in picture with that as the background next and me as the foreground next. Turn off this, make me bigger, done. Oh, and I forgot. If I come in here and I turn on Chroma King, done. Now, here's me over top of these backgrounds and these backgrounds are going to audit, they're playing, they're animated, animated GIFs, and I don't have to do anything. Here's my hands and they will shift every 10 seconds or like I says, any interval you set. And when you get to the end, it'll automatically loop back and start doing them again. This is a fantastic feature. Also, like I said, this also works with PDFs. So if somebody gives you a PDF with a bunch of sponsor logos, you can use that as part of the show. I have a PDF here. You could, it's basically, it's, it's, a, it's a written PDF. And if I go into my settings for this PDF, I can turn auto switch on for this one. It only has two pages done. But I'm just gonna use this as an example that this PDF, which is now playing, will automatically switch after 10 seconds. It will go to the next source. There it goes. And if you have a horizontal PDF of images, sponsor logos, anything you want that can be dropped in here, auto switch and put in as a source. Another key feature of the images and stills is you have that control right here on the display on the mini. So I can go back, I can go forward, I can skip to the beginning, I can skip to the end. I, you know, it, it, it allows me to quickly go through if I need to jump, you know, oh, I don't want to use this one, I just jump to the next one. It makes it super handy, I don't have to dive into here. But again, if you were in the settings for that, I could turn auto switch off and then use this to go to whichever background I wanted when I wanted to, and that is my program out. So here it is, this one, I come over here, and here's that one. So you can say like, you know, if you're doing a presentation, here I go, and this is what I'm talking about here, and it'll stay up there as long as I want it to, and then I can tap the next slide, and here you can see the results from this thing, and these are the results from the next thing. Makes it super easy to control your stills, and I, as I said, PDFs, and you're able to talk about them and be in front of them because they are an input. Again, both of these are fantastic new features available in the Pro and now the Mini. Audio follows video now defaults to off. And this is something that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time, and myself included. And what it does is it, is it means you pick your audio source. And then, unless you tell the Yolo box to, the Yolo box doesn't change it. Down here in the audio mixer, you can see audio follows video is off. You can still turn it on when you want to use it. Like if you're using remote guests, you're going to want to be able to touch that guest to bring them into the show and you want their audio to come with them. And then when you leave them or you pull them off program, then you want their audio turned off. Having audio follows video in that case is a great feature, but most of the time, if you're doing a presentation and you're one live camera, but you wanna to cut to an overhead or a multi-view or something like this, I don't want the audio turning off when I switch this and I go just to a full screen view of just this. Well, my overhead camera doesn't have audio. I want my audio to stay where I put it. And that's where this comes into play. As you can see, I've got a mic input here and this is the audio from this microphone. It's basically just a little mic um, right here, plugged right into the mic input right there. And you can see the mic level right there. 
And if I were to switch to something else, do, 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 like just that, you can see that my audio is still working. Well, you can't really see it with that particular image. We'll wait a few seconds. But the audio will continue to stay where I put it, no matter what the source changes behind. The last feature I'm going to show you is another one that people have asked for and is really going to make a big difference, even though it seems like it's just a teeny little fix. But it's going to be huge because the YOLO box allows users like you to customize things even more, especially with titles. So let us go to our little title thing here. We're going to create a new title. I don't have any, but what we're talking about is these lower thirds and these lower thirds like this one used to be always connected to that edge of the screen. And people were like, I want to put it on the other side. You know, my graphics look like everybody else's because everybody's has it stuck on that side. And it was, it was annoying, but now I could put it up there. I could put it down there. I could put it wherever I want. And all of the original capabilities are still there. So you can change the, the title size, the subtitle size, the offset, which, you know, how, how they look. You can change the color of the text and the box. You can change the scale of the whole thing. And then you can set it to auto height. You can change the fonts of that and that. You can change the text for all of those things. And then in that list of icons, you can give it a name because sometimes when this is set up, let's just save this right here. And that's kind of hard to read. But if I were to come over here and edit and I give it a name and I say, T-I-T-L-E, one, done. Now it says title one, and that's a lot easier to read and find when I've got a list of titles to go through. Listening to user feedback and incorporating those features into the Yolo box is what makes Yolo Live so exciting as a company. They have been listening to user feedback with audio follows video, with titles, with the ability to add graphic images as inputs and making that bonding available on the the pro devices the mini devices and separating it from yolo cast so that those people who don't need yolo cast but want to do bonding or those people who want to do bonding but don't need yolo cast you now have the ability to pick and choose the, the services that you want that has been a look at the new features available to the yolo box mini i hope this helps you get the most out of your yolo box mini my name is Anthony Porokas for Yolo Live. Thanks for watching.